I've been asked to do number 14. This is the one that was done in class. Um, it says a wire of length 12 inches can be bent into a circle, a square, or cut into two pieces to make both a circle and a square. How much wire should be used for the circle if the total area enclosed by the figure is to be a maximum or a minimum? So um, I think the first step, as usual, is to just kind of figure out um, what's going on with the problem and what a reasonable answer would be. So I've done uh, this geometry sketch pad simulation. We have uh, a 12 inches right here, okay? And so we want to figure out where to cut the X. So um, part of it is going to be cut into a circle, or we could make the whole thing be cut into a square. If the whole thing is cut into a square, then X is equal to zero because X is, the question says how much of the wire should be used to make a circle. So in this case, we have zero for the, this is just the point here. I could actually, um, hide that because there is, that's just the center of it. The entire square here would be 12 inches in terms of the perimeter. So if the perimeter is 12 inches, then you can imagine that we can call this 12 minus x because that's the length of the square, the, rec the uh, perimeter. So 12 minus x divided by 4 would give me the length of one of the sides, right? 3, 3, 3, and 3. And then so the area of the square is 9 square centimeters. Now on the other hand, we could imagine, well, what would happen if we made the entire wire the uh, circle? Okay, in that case, the perimeter or the circumference of the circle is 12 inches around. So recall, um, I'll try to write this right, so we have the circumference is equal to 12 so how do we figure out the area? Well, the area is equal to pi times r squared. So we have to figure out what r is. Well, that's equal to this 2 times pi times r, right? Because that's the equation for the circumference of a circle. So if we want to solve for r, we get r is equal to 12 divided by 2 pi. Okay, so in this case, um, the circumference would be 12. In general, the circumference, if I move this to, uh, oops, did I? So in general, um, I'm going to move this back here, okay, uh, this, the circumference would be x, so we would replace this 12 with an x. So that's what we have here, x divided by 2 pi and that equals um, when when I'm because I was talking about if I move it all the way over here, okay. So we're having um, x be equal to 12. You have 12 divided by 2 pi. That's 6 divided by pi, which is 1.91 centimeters. So the area then is going to be pi times r squared. So it's going to be 1.91. So if I say calculate, that would be um, well, actually, I can do this, right? It'll be this times this squared, sorry. Okay. That's because that's the radius, pi uh, times pi. So we have 11.46, which is what we got here. That's, how, that's the area. Of this. I, I, this just was calculated, but the, I mean, this was just measured. This is actually calculated. So hopefully that makes sense. So the area of the entire circle is 11.46. If we made the whole thing a square, remember it was nine square centimeters. So it looks like the maximum is if we take the entire 12 inches um, and make it the circumference of the circle because 11.46 is bigger than nine. So we've done the maximum there. I'm just going to erase this. Now the question is that, so we did part A. Now we want to say, well, what's the minimum? Okay, so what we can do now then is look at, here's the area of the, the circle. Here's the area of the square. What I want to do is add them. The area of the circle plus the area of the square is now only five. So you can see that breaking it in, in apart 
is is going to cause a minimum because it was 11 point something here and nine something here. And if I take the, the two areas, you only get 5.17. So um, let's just see what this function looks like. So what I wanna do is I wanna plot on the axis, I wanna plot X, the amount of the circumference of the square, and I wanna uh, plot that against the sum of those two areas. So I'm gonna say plot is X, Y and that's this point right here. And so now, as I move this, what's gonna happen is, well, let's, let's uh, trace it. Okay, oops. So if I move this, you see that it makes sense, that's going up to the nine, and then it's go, then it looks like the sum is way smaller, and then we know that this one, uh, goes up to the 11 point something. So again, on the interval from 0 to 12, because that's the range of x, the maximum is over here when it's a circle, as we know. So we want to find this minimum right in here. You know, I probably should make this a different color so that you don't think that it's related to the... Uh... There, I'll make it purple. Okay, so now let's, we want to find out, there we go. So now we're going to trace that again. Okay, another thing that you can do in Sketchpad is if you don't want to trace it, you can say, give me the locus of this point as this one moves along, and then I'll say construct the locus. And now it's, I, mean, I can erase the traces and the locus will stay there. So it looks to be that uh, the minimum is somewhere around there. So uh, as always in these min-max problems, what we need to do is to find the equation of this line and then take the derivative in order to find where the slope of the tangent line is zero. So what is the equation of this? Well, it is the uh, equation of the two areas. And here's the function. And notice that it lays over that perfectly. Isn't that cool? So the function is going to be, um, actually, I'll tell you what, let's just, um, hold on to the function because I'm going to show you that in a minute, but let's just show the derivative now. You can see here's the derivative, and I'll again go through paper and pencil to show you how all that works, but um, it looks like, let's see, here's the equation of the tangent line. Um, looks like I need to move it a little bit more. 0.6, I'm looking right here, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, where's the derivative equal to zero? There. So it's when x is Da, 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 da. 5.28. Looks like it's about when x is 5.28. So now let's go to look at exactly what it should look like on paper. Okay, here we are. Um, now we're doing this paper and pencil version of the same problem. So again, we have the area of the circle is pi times the radius squared. So that's going to be x over 2 pi squared. Area of the square is 12 minus x over 4 squared because it's side squared. So I just did the math here, um, squared this pi, well, it's, it's x squared over 4 pi squared, um, and then the pi's can cancel and you get 1 over 4 pi times x squared. And here this is, um, you know, just multiplying it out, 144 minus 24x plus x squared divided by 16. So then each one can be over 16. That's 144 over 16 minus 3 halves. x plus x squared over 16. I knew that I was going to be taking the derivative, so this doesn't really matter. So I didn't bother doing the math. So just one of those things to think about before you, you know, go and do all the um, calculations I often see people do on tests. Just think, like, do I really need to do that? So now up here, um, we're taking the derivative of these two functions. So the derivative of this one is, um, oh, I see what I did. I just rewrote it. So this is the derivative of this, 1 over 4 pi times x squared plus the derivative of this. So now we take the derivative of each one of these add-ins, which is 1 over 2 pi x. Again, this becomes 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0, minus 3 halves. Um, plus 2 sixteenths times x, and we want to set that equal to 0. So I'm going to factor out an x from this and this, and we get 1 over 2 pi plus 2 sixteenths is 1 eighth. 
And at the same time, I know that if, if I add the, ad, the additive inverse, I will get um, the zero identity here. And if I add three halves to this side, we'll just get three halves. So then I'm, I'm going to um, solve for x by dividing by this. So we have three halves divided by this. And now I just want to get a common denominator. What's the common denominator of 2 pi and 8? Well, that's going to be 16 pi. So you have 8 over 16 pi plus 2 pi over 16 pi, which turns out to be this. So now we have, since we have this compound fraction, you can simplify that by, re by uh, multiplying the top and the bottom by the reciprocal of the bottom. And so we get 3 halves times 16 pi divided by 8 plus 2 pi. And at this point, you um, get 48 pi over 16 plus 4 pi. And on a test, obviously, I would want you to leave it in this form. Even this form would be fine. But since um, we have calculators and this is homework, it turns out to be, this turns out to be 5.28 inches, which is um, exactly what we found in the Sketchpad version. So I really hope that this has helped. And remember, this is 5.28 inches, which is the minimum amount that you could cut the wire to get the smallest circle and the smallest square. Well, I really hope this has been helpful.